Hello and welcome to the Clinical Liver Diseases video series. CLD is an official digital learning publication of the AASLD. I'm Michelle Jenkins, Adult Transplant Hepatology Physician Assistant at MedStar Georgetown Transplant Institute and the author of Ascites After Liver Transplant. Ascites after liver transplant is a rare occurrence that is reported to occur in 3 to 7% of patients and is associated with an increased risk of morbidity and decreased one-year survival. As seen in Figure 1, there are several causes for post-transplant ascites, which can be divided into hepatic versus extrahepatic subgroups. Hepatic causes include alterations in hepatic inflow, hepatic outflow obstruction, rejection, recurrent hepatitis, and prolonged cold ischemic time. Extrahepatic causes include heart failure, chronic renal disease, and infection. Of the hepatic causes, outflow obstruction is the most commonly identified etiology and is often due to stenosis of the cable anastomosis, which can be diagnosed with contrast-enhanced cross-sectional imaging. As seen in Figure 2, Additional workup for evaluation of post-transplant ascites includes diagnostic paracentesis, transthoracic echocardiogram, and transjugular liver biopsy with pressure measurements and venogram. The treatment of post-transplant ascites is directed towards the underlying cause if modifiable. For example, Patients with cable stenosis often undergo balloon angioplasty or surgical repair with prompt resolution of their ascites. Patients who are found to have recurrent hepatitis or rejection can be treated with antivirals and increased immunosuppression, respectively. For patients without a modifiable cause, diuretics remain the mainstay of treatment, but this can be limited due to electrolyte imbalances and renal impairment. The use of TIPS post-transplant has been used for the treatment of ascites, though with documented wide variation in clinical success in several risk factors, including TIPS dysfunction and hepatic encephalopathy. In recent years, splenic artery embolization has been used as an alternative to TIPS, with studies showing high rates of clinical success and minimal complications. In conclusion, the occurrence of ascites after liver transplant is a rare occurrence that can result in increased morbidity and mortality. Evaluation requires a stepwise approach to guide management and treatment with the ultimate goal of ascites resolution. On behalf of all of us on the CLD team, I hope you found this review of post-transplant ascites useful. For more information about ascites after liver transplant, please visit us at www.cldlearning.com. Thank you for watching.